Good morning. It is uh, good to see everybody here. I, I, I was, I'm very surprised. I thought for sure there'd be folks coming in with their Bermuda shorts and little straw hats and things. I mean, we're, we're like, you know, going to more than double the temperature we had yesterday. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, Lord willing, we'll, we'll be able to make it above the freezing mark all the way to 37, 38, something like that today, I hope. Uh, so uh, very, very excited to, to uh, see that uh, warm front coming through and, uh, and hopefully uh, thaw out some, some pipes. I know there's been uh, folks here and there that have been uh, having some plumbing difficulties. Hopefully everybody is, is doing okay, better than the city of Royston. Uh, they've had a snowstorm, ice storm, all right in downtown evidently or, or somewhere close to that. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get through this. But uh, thank you for being here, and especially thank, uh, thank you for the visitors that are here, and, uh, and excited to have you here. And uh, we have a few announcements before we get started. Uh, first one to be a reminder of, of us to be able to, to use one of the, uh, the great tools that God has given us, uh, a tool and a, and a weapon, a reminder for us to, to pray, pray for each other, and uh, pray for, for those even that we don't know. But for those that we do know, we do have a, a list, and I... I'll go ahead and tell you, I, I, I worked on the uh, bulletin this morning, <clears throat> found a typo already. I, get, I need to call that up before Bob calls it out for me. Uh, but uh, now I'll let him look, see if he finds it. Uh, but he probably already has. Uh, but uh, it doesn't look exactly like the uh, bulletins we've seen in the past. Uh, but um, I tell you, what, it's the best bulletin we've got here today. Okay, all right, this, there we go. All right. So on our, on our list, I know we've got uh, a, a few uh, folks that have been asking for prayers. You know, Kathy uh, reached out and uh, you know, said she's, of course, uh, still going through the, uh, the uh, physical therapy uh, and, and the, the treatments. That she, they did take some x-rays, and they said everything's healing properly. Uh, she uh, disappointed. She, she hasn't gotten any taller through all of this work, but uh, she is uh, working hard at, uh, at getting her her uh, shoulder back and everything is progressing well it's just progressing slowly so uh, definitely keep her in your prayers and uh, we got uh, Jeremy on the list uh, he is uh, traveling to uh, uh, to Texas uh, he'll be there when it's warmer than when Steve and Cherry got out there but uh, he'll have a week ish uh, in Texas visiting a close personal friend of his and uh, then he'll uh, head back to school after a week, so Texas to Georgia to pick up his laundry and then uh, uh, back on to Tennessee. So if you could keep him in your prayers as he is uh, traveling around. And uh, uh, an update from uh, uh, Billy. Uh, Wednesday, he ended up uh, having some problems with his blood pressure. Like, well, he, he texted it, so it's public knowledge, right? But it's, it was like 245 was one of the top numbers, and then 100 and something for a lower. And it was, I guess there was a number, so it wasn't off the charts, but it was crazy high. And so he was in the hospital for about three days, working on uh, medication, trying to get it uh, settled right, and he's, he's back home, but uh, just trying to make sure that everything is right with it. So definitely keep him in your prayers. And uh, <clears throat> also with, with Cheryl. Uh, a few different versions of medication trying to keep her to where she can uh, function correctly and not uh, uh, pass out from, um, from whatever she's taking. They've, they've given her something else, and so she's trying that. I think she said she's on number five. So uh, keep her in your prayers as they, they work on her and, and uh, uh, get those prescriptions right. And, of course, uh, you know, pray for our leaders, uh, again, local state, uh, uh, the federal leaders and, and leaders around the world, of course, that they will uh, go to the source for information uh, in, in leading us and leading the world. Pray for those that are being persecuted uh, just for being Christians around the world. And, uh, of course, for those that in the mission field, we, we support uh, some in, in, the, uh, in Costa Rica, India, and, and Kenya. But we know there's other uh, of our family that's around the world that uh, have to hide to worship. Uh, they are in danger of their lives just by being who they are and believing what they believe. So keep them in your prayers. And our reminder for ourselves, uh, an opportunity to, to come together. Uh, often we have uh, Bible classes uh, Sunday morning and Wednesday night. 
and then of course worship uh, now and then uh, tonight at, at five o'clock or Sunday nights at five. So uh, if you have opportunity, of course, uh, please come and, and spend time with each other. And uh, one more important reminder that uh, Larry wants me to make sure that we mention next Sunday will be the first Sunday of uh, the month and oh I didn't change the uh, there's another typo okay don't pay any attention to the that's, that's copy and paste but it doesn't automatically update I, I, I love the autocorrect but sometimes uh, you have to use it so um, so I'm gonna cover it up here on my screen so I can't see it hopefully you can't either I think that's how that works uh, but next Sunday uh, January the 1st uh, we will have uh, uh, potluck so uh, everybody uh, stick around and hang out for lunch. Of course, we'll just be next door in the annex. And then afterwards, we'll have uh, singing. And we won't have worship service that night because we'll have our uh, uh, singing and, and be able to worship together in the afternoon. All right. And before uh, we find anything else that needs to be corrected, let's move to this slide, number 738. Uh, Nathaniel's going to be leading us in our song service. So if you want to go ahead and turn there or, or you can look up on the on the screen here, and then we'll begin our, our worship to the Lord. We'll sing all four stanzas of 738. <clears throat> we will glorify the King of Kings. We will
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us back together, Lord, so we can sing praise in thy name and worship you, Lord. Bless us as we give back a portion of our earnings that all belongs to you anyhow, Lord, and just let us use it and to carry on your will, Lord. Just bless us, give all our sins. In heaven's name we pray. Amen. Seven hundred and seventeen. Seven one seven. <clears throat> we'll sing the first and third sounds, then we'll have the opening prayer. I heard an old old story.
we're all able to take some time off of work and be able to enjoy time with family to, and to appreciate all the things that you give us in this life, Father. Lord, we, um, at this time, we'd like to pray for those who are not able to be with us this morning, Father, for whatever reason. You know that we have a lot of folks that are that have sickness or injuries or difficulties. Lord, I just pray that it be your will that you would restore them to their health and, uh, and, and watch over and care for them, Father. We pray that you watch over those that are traveling and uh, especially with the cold weather that we've got going on right now in the, in the icy roads, and we just pray that you would keep everyone safe, Father. Lord, we just especially pray this morning that, that, that if there's anyone here this morning who has who is not accepted uh, Christ as their Savior or has not uh, been washed in, in His blood and been baptized, Father, or that, that, that we may say or do something here this morning that would, that would help them to, to reach out to you, Father. Lord, it's our most humble prayer that everything that we say and do, we do according to your word. And we ask and pray all these things to your Son, our Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Before the Lord's Supper, we'll be singing page 359. 359. We'll sing the first and fourth stanzas. <clears throat> Jesus, keep me near the cross, bear a precious fountain, preach to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain,
prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this cup that represents your son's blood that was spilt on the cross for the remission of our sins. That those who take this cup and do it will please mine of thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The invitation song today will be on page 655, 655, and at that time we'll just sing the first stanza. Before the lesson, we'll be singing page 125. One, two, five. We'll sing the first and third stanza. <clears throat> Have you a heart that's Wow. 
Good to see you again. And uh, I, I know I mentioned, uh, I, I think I mentioned Steve and Cherry in, in passing uh, about uh, 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 being out of town, but I didn't make the official say, hey, they're traveling and they're out of town. So, well, now, now I did. So I, I've got them covered. I th they're, of course, uh, started out in Texas, and then I think Steve was going over to check out some oceanfront property in Arizona, or, or he was going to visit his mom, one of those two. And uh, they're going to be back sometime next year, which sounds like a really long time away, but uh, hopefully after, uh, after next uh, Sunday, they, they may or, you know, be back sometime around the Wednesday or, or Thursday of the week after next Sunday. So definitely keep them in your prayers. And that was just in case you're listening to this later. Uh, we miss you guys. Okay. I got it covered. All right. So uh, we are going to talk about, well, the song we just sang. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and turn back over to uh, number 125, uh, you, can, you can read along with me in your book. Uh, we'll also, of course, look at the scriptures. So um, I'm going to check on your, your balance and your ability to handle two books at one time. But... Um, this uh, particular song, well, it, uh, it, asks, it asks a lot of questions. Or, you know, we, we sing a lot of, of questions. And uh, we look at uh, the first verse, and um, it goes, uh, of course, something like this. Have you a heart that's weary, tending a load of care? Are you a soul that's seeking rest from the burden you bear? And again. Uh, you know, singing about somebody that, uh, you know, of course, is, is nothing like us or nothing like we've ever been through. We've never had any cares or, or burdens or, or worry, he says facetiously. Uh, you know, this is a, a question, you know, just uh, we're having a conversation, uh, you know, just between two people here. And, uh, hey, uh, are you living life too? Amen. Do you have uh, things that uh, are going on that... Uh, that are, are, you know, you feel like more than you can bear? It's just a question. Hold on to that. I'm going to give you the answer in just a minute. But I'm just, you know, because now we're going to move to the second verse. Uh, and uh, where is your heart, O pilgrim? Uh, what does your light reveal? Who hears your call for comfort when naught but sorrow you feel? Again, if uh, life is, is overwhelming and, and sometimes uh, we, we think on things and um, especially this time of year. This is uh, the most uh, wonderful time of the year. And, uh, well, not for everybody. Sometimes even this time of year with all the lights and uh, the presents and kids and candy canes and all the, even all the good stuff, sometimes the, the uh, burden of grief and, and sorrow can creep in and, and weigh us down. And so, well, where are you going to go? Uh, you know, because I know nobody wants to stay like that. So where can we go that that we can have relief from that? And again, hold on to that because we're going to ask some more questions here. We'll get to the answer in, in just a minute. Verse number three, uh, who knows your disappointments? Who hears each time you cry? Who understands your heartaches? Who dries the tears from your eyes? Because a, a lot of times we're by ourselves when we when we show these things. Uh, we put, put on the brave face, and I know there's like 4,700 different uh, uh, drug commercials that are on TV right now, so, and I did not go back and research. But you got the one that, that the, the lady's walking around with the smiley face in, in front of her normal face, and she just kind of walks around like that because she's putting on an act. And, and so everybody else sees what an awesome person this is, and she uh, seems so happy and always has a smile on her face because they don't see the paper plate that's got the little thing colored in. But behind all of that, it, it, it's her and how she feels. And so, of course, uh, they offer some help uh, with their product. But here's the question. Even when you're by yourself, who is there to have this sympathy, empathy, this, uh, you know, who's there with you? And, well, now, now we need to answer the question. <coughs> In the chorus, uh, well, we get the answers to the questions that have just been asked. But it's by asking other questions. And so, of course, you know, think, well, that sounds a, that sounds a lot like this uh, show I know. But, 
answers in the in the form of questions. But that's exactly what we've got here. We've got all these questions. And hey, look, you you need help. Where can you get it? Well, in the chorus, we get to ask other questions, but they really give the answer to where we need to go if we need help. Do you know my Jesus? Do you know my friend? Have you heard he loves you and that he will abide till the end? And I want to look at the answers this morning uh, in, instead of the, the questions. We've, we've thrown the questions out there. Let's throw the questioning answers or the answering questions, however you want to say that. Let's look at those this morning to see where we can get the answers on where we can go when, when we feel like somebody needs to throw the penalty flag for piling on because it, it, that's what it feels like. It's just piling on. So the first uh, answering question, uh, do you know my friend Jesus? And so when we look at, uh, at this answer, uh, do you know them? And, and this is, uh, again, more like, uh, you know, have you heard of them? No, that, that's not really it. It's, uh, you know, just kind of a, not one of those I know of them. This is more, listen, do, do you know Jesus? And when we know somebody, we're talking like really, really know them. Uh, my wife uh, went to uh, Jackson County uh, Correctional High School. No, 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 Comprehensive High School. So, I'm sorry. Uh, and I went to Commerce High School. I went, I went to the school on the good side of the river. And so um, it's funny because we'll, it happened more often when we had better brains. I'm not calling her forgetful, but I, I'm calling me forgetful. But uh, we would go along and, and we'd see somebody uh, where everybody sees everybody at, at Walmart. And it's, they'd go walking by and, and she'd make comments. I think I went to school with them. And I would think that's just the oddest thing to say. Because, well, you know, I went to Commerce High School. We had, you know, a whole 60 or 70 in the graduating class. We had, a, you know, a couple of hundred in the whole school. And, I mean, I, I knew the folks that I went to school with. I, I knew their brothers and sisters their, and, and some of them their cousins. I definitely knew moms and dads because they knew me. And <clears throat> they were very helpful people. And, and, and grandparents, all this. I mean, we, we knew each other. And so, you know, just to throw, I think they went to school with me. That was just kind of odd. Well, we can know Jesus better than I think I know him. And so, but here's an, another question. I hate to keep throwing so many at you this morning. How can we know Jesus? And, well, he's, he's not here walking around. Oh, we read through the gospel accounts, and here he is, uh, you know, spending uh, his, his life there. Uh, you know, we have, uh, of course, he, you know, about 30 years or so that he was here on earth. We have uh, a documented, uh, a little more specifically, three years of his life. Uh, before he was crucified. So since he's not here doing that now, so how, how can we know him? And so, well, it's the same way we figure out uh, the way other people are and, and facts around situations. We, we can go to eyewitness accounts of, of what it was like to be there with Jesus. Uh, 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse number 16, Peter calls this out and says, listen, I'm, I'm telling you about Jesus. And it's not something that we made up or I made up. I didn't buy the rights to this particular story. I'm telling you, I was there. I saw it. Uh, for we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Again, calling out the fact that, uh, listen, uh, these people back then knew all about these um, cleverly devised myths. There were whole God systems made out of these cleverly devised myths. Somebody sat around and, and created all these gods. And here was Peter explaining God. And again, it's not just something that uh, these uh, 12 guys sat around and, and made up. You know, wouldn't this be a cool power to talk about? What if he did this? No, that's it. They're telling you, this is what we saw. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was born to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son with whom I'm well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. Of course, this is when Jesus, the, the transfiguration, and he, he was all in white and had uh, Moses and Elijah there. Peter saying, oh, this is great that we're here. Let, we could build a, a, a tent, a, a tabernacle. We can build one for, for Moses and one for Elijah and one for Jesus. And, well, he got the correct answer to that with the voice of God. We talked this morning about, uh, you know, what if God was able to, to talk to you 
what would the reaction be? And well, you know, uh, heart attack was thrown around a little bit. That would be kind of scary. All of a sudden, God speaking. And so here is Peter said, listen, I heard it. And, of course, he was also being reprimanded and encouraged to do the right thing. Uh, listen to Jesus. He's the one that you need to listen to. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And then he throws in that last part. Hear him. I was there. I heard it. I saw it. I saw him. And that's what I'm telling you about. We have the prophetic word more fully confirmed to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Not only am I telling you what I saw, I have the Holy Spirit guiding me in what you need to hear. I'm inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is getting the information from the mind of God from, and, and remembering, help us remember what Jesus taught us, and that's what I'm sharing with you. It's not just something some guy sat around and made up. We have bookstores full of things like that, movie theaters full of things like that, and Peter said, well, they didn't have the movie theaters. But that's not what I'm selling you here. That's not what I'm telling you. That's not what I'm giving you. I'm giving you the facts that are coming from God. That's how we can know Jesus, because we get to see what they saw. We get to read about him and see his power and, and, and read about his compassion and read about his love for God and love for us. Look at uh, John chapter 20 again, speaking of those things that, that he could do. Uh, Jesus did many of the signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Again, we can know what he did. And the same power that he had back then to, to use to convince others that he was speaking from uh, the authority of God. Well, we have that same thing because we have eyewitness accounts of his power. And so, yes, we can know Jesus. Look at uh, 1 John uh, chapter 2. Verse number 1, my little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is, uh, the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. So again... We can know him, and then we can show that we know him. We're his friend if we do what he says for us to do. And so, of course, John reminding us of that. He is the authority. He has the power. He has uh, done what it takes for us to have our, our sins washed away. He took our place. He's a good friend. Amen. He is a, a brother. He is our Savior. He is our Lord. Do we know him? Because that's really important if we are going to go where we all want to go one day. Once judgment is over and we have that uh, home in heaven waiting for us, then it takes us knowing him as our friend by doing what he says to do to be able to be there. And again, uh, we don't have to wonder. I wonder if Jesus is my friend. Uh, because we uh, look at uh, you know, Luke chapter 7, uh, we, we see again, those that, uh, that he hung around. Here is, here is uh, you know, Almighty God, and there, there is no equal. So if, you're, you know, if you hang out with people that are like you and, and people of your particular station, and we worry about, well, you know, God's not going to hang out with me. I'm just me. Well, Jesus came to this earth, and he had an opportunity to hang out with everybody that he wanted to hang out with. To what then shall I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not weep. For John the Baptist uh, has come eating no bread and drinking no wine. And you say he has a demon. The son of man has come eating and drinking. And you say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of the tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by all her children. 
So he, he was being uh, called out. So you, you're hanging out with all the wrong people. You know, the, those people, they sin. Those people uh, may not have the best reputation, and, and you're hanging out with them. And the fact that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, that means he is able to hang out and, and be a friend with all, Amen. including us. Amen. And so here they were complaining because he did not fit their model. He was hanging out with uh, the tax collectors and sinners and, and people that they wouldn't be seen with. And, uh, of course, since he would uh, eat with them and he would uh, talk with them, oh, they, oh that, that just is horrible. But then you have John, on the other hand, who was uh, basically alone. People would come out to him, and he wouldn't hang out with people. And, uh, well, he has a demon. Something's off with him just a little bit because he doesn't hang out with people. I don't know if you knew this or not, but you can't please people. <laughs> not every single person is going to agree. And so here were some people who were disagreeable, no matter the situation. And yet, they called him out for doing exactly what he wanted to do. He was coming to seek and save the lost. Yeah, you know, you, you, you need to really uh, find them if that's what you say you're going to do. And he did. He found them, encouraged them, talked to them, told them to repent, died for them. So, again, uh, he is a friend to all. Luke 15, uh, uh, first couple of verses there, the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him. The Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, this man receives sinners and gasp. He eats with them. He is our friend. He wants to be our friend. He has already done what it takes to be our savior if we'll obey him. Do you know that Jesus is your friend? We we'll say Matthew chapter 11, uh, verse uh, 28. Again, we, we ask these questions in the song about being uh, burdened and, and weary and sad. And Well, he offers an invitation. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm -hmm. And so there, there are those that say, okay, yes, I will, I will take Jesus. Uh, and, and he said, come on and, and just have it easy. Well, see, not everybody here is a, is a farmer. I've taken advantage of uh, what farmers can do for us. I, I've eaten before in my life. I've never uh, been a farmer. But I understand what a yoke is. Uh, not something that's found inside an egg. That's got an extra little letter there that's, that, that, that's yoke. Yoke is what you uh, drive the oxen with. I, I've watched enough uh, Little House in the Prairie to, to kind of know how that works. And, and so here you have this big wood thing that you hang over a couple of big animals and they are helping pull the plow right along and, and you're hoping that it's in a straight line. There's still a yoke to wear. Now, the one that the world offers, they may sell this uh, lovely light, no problems, just uh, live and let live, do whatever you want yoke, but is actually heavy enough to keep you out of heaven. The one that Jesus is offering says, okay, listen, it, it's light. Uh, let me take that burden off, but I want you to put this yoke on. He still has instructions for us to follow. He still wants to guide us. He is that much of a friend. I want to be in heaven with you for all eternity. So let me guide you in how to get there. Put my yoke on. It's much better. He's that good a friend. And of course, he's a good enough friend that he shows his love. Greater love has no one than this. That someone lay down his life for his friends. Of course, uh, John 3.16, he's got a world full of friends. Because he died for all of us. And if we are Christians, uh, we sing another song called What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Amen. And all our sins and griefs to bear, he is ready to take on our burden if we're willing to take on his yoke. He wants to be a friend.
is he yours? Another uh, answering question we see in the chorus of the song, have you heard that he loves you? And, uh, of course, we've talked a lot about the love he has for all. Uh, we see in 1 John 4 and, and verse 8, uh, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. And this is the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us, sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Romans 6, uh, verse 23, again, that reminder that the wages of sin is death, that we, when we sin, and we all sin and come short of the glory of God, we earn death. Jesus said, I'll take that penalty. And see, when we have uh, you know, something happen with our, our kids or something, we, we want to be able to help them out and, and something bad happens. And listen, look, you go sit over there. I'm going to take care of this. I can fix this. Let me do that for you. But no matter what is going in, on in their life uh, spiritually, if they have sin in their life, we can't take that from them because, well, we're just people too. We're part of that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God needed a perfect sacrifice and an unblemished lamb to take the place of someone who sinned. Nobody on this earth is qualified for that except for that uh, one man, the son of man, Jesus, who knew no sin. Amen. And so as much as we want to help our, our children, our family, our friends, or whoever it is, we can't. Jesus can, and that's because he loves us. God wanted to help us, and he can because he loves us. As much as we want to, as much as we love everyone, we can't. We sing a, a song that I, I looked in the book. I, I, don't, I know we've, we've sung it before, I think, or maybe it's in other places, but the love of God and uh, just the words coming through my head. Uh, verse number three, because I was able to uh, look it up online. Uh, Google has a songbook in case you were wondering about that. Uh, but uh, verse number three of, of the love of God. Could we with ink the ocean fill were the skies with parchment made? Were every stalk on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade? To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Or could the scroll contain the whole that stretched from sky to sky? We can't describe God's love for us adequately enough, Amen. no matter how hard we try. We can't describe the power of God adequately. And he loves us. He created us. He's our father. We get to talk to him. Uh, he talks to us through the scriptures. We get to have a relationship with the creator of the entire universe. And he knows me. And anybody else named me here. That is God's love. And he poured it out for us. And we see it with Jesus. We see it with, with God. And Jesus over and over again talked about, I, I'm doing the will of my Father. When he gets to the garden and, and prays, you know, if there's another way, let, let this cup pass for me. But not my will, let, let your will be done, God. He had a choice to do God's will or not. Of course, to him it was no choice. Of course I'm going to do God's will. But he loves us enough that he went through what he went through. And, of course, we just remembered all of that, uh, the, the torture that happened before, the, the beatings and, and uh, the mock trials and the uh, ridicule. And then driving nails through the body as he is hung up there on the cross for hours and completely disrespectful making fun of him mocking him as he is hanging up there knowing that he is, he's going to take his last breath he is going to die and they make fun of him and he loved those people that were making fun of him he loved the people that were nailing him to the cross he loved the people that were lying to try to get him to be killed and he loved us, part of the reason that he was on that cross, even though we weren't even born yet.
while we were still weak at the right time Christ died for the ungodly we're, we're in that group or we were hopefully his death has fixed that so that we are not ungodly anymore we're righteous Revelation uh, 1 verse number 4 uh, John to the seven churches that are in Asia grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ the faithful witness the firstborn of the dead the ruler of the kings on earth to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom priest to his God and father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen he's somebody that's extremely important and he knows all about us and he died for us. His life being given so that we could be free from sin, the, the whole purpose is I'm, I'm going to come to earth, I'm going to die miserably, and then I'm going to get to hang out with my family for all eternity after that. I'm doing this so that they can all be with me. That's the type of love that Jesus has for us. Normally when something bad is going to happen. Normally when we know or there's pain up there, I'm going to be going this direction. We talked about, uh, we're going through the harmony of the Gospels on, on Wednesday nights in, in class, and we, we talk about there's a couple of different cases where it was pointed out he, he turned towards Jerusalem. He was going towards Jerusalem. His disciples encouraging him, okay, listen, you keep telling us you're going to die and you're going to be buried. And I think uh, sometimes they forgot about that. Oh, yeah, and I'm coming back. I'll see you again in three days. But they heard the uh, dying and, and burial part. Is that if that's really going to happen, we need to be going the other way. But well, he moved on anyway, even with their encouragement or lack of. They went with him. That was nice. He knew what he was getting into. He knew what he was getting into before time began. And he said, sign me up. I am their only hope. I, I can't not do it. All right, and the uh, uh, final uh, answering question that we see in the chorus of this particular song is that reminder, he will be with us till the end. And, uh, you know, we've heard of these uh, fair weather friends that as long as things are going well with you, things are going great, and I can be your friend. But then somebody needs something and, and, and trouble happens and I'm, I need to, to lean on you. Hello, are you there? They're gone, all right, because well, I only like you during the happy times. Or, you know, it could be like the, uh, uh, the prodigal son and, and, you know, people really liked him. He, was, he had lots of friends when he had money. And then he would hang out with the pigs after that. Jesus is not like that. He is there all the time. Amen. And we look at uh, John chapter 10. See in verse number 22, uh, at, the, at that time the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter. Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of, of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And so, again, this relationship that we have he is always there and as long as we choose to stay there in that relationship with him that relationship is going to be there no one uh, you know the, the devil uh, tries as hard as he can to convince us we're in the uh, in the wrong relationship he can't make us move away from God that's a choice that, that we make we look at uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 37. Now, Paul talked about this uh, same type of thing. Uh, Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's a pretty big list. Uh, 
I mean, he could have just uh, said uh, nothing in all creation. That would have covered all the other stuff. But uh, listen, just to uh, uh, forple, uh, fipple, uh, however many times, uh, emphasize this particular statement here. He started naming all things. Powers cannot take us from the love of, of God. Uh, it, angels can't. Rulers of the world, you know, they, uh, try as they might, they can burn all the Bibles they want. They can make laws against Christianity. They can do all these things. They cannot separate us from this love that God is offering to us, that Jesus uh, has showed us. But that reminder, of course, the, the one thing that's not on the list that we just read through. Me. I can separate from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, again, as long as we want that relationship, as long as we are going to be his friend, he is there for us. And even if we decide to move away and then say, well, that was a mistake. I need to get back as fast as I can. He's still there waiting for us. Now, we see that, again, in the prodigal son, that the father is, is there, is looking for his son to come back, sees him afar, runs out, and, and they are able to hug. He has been waiting on him. That is the reaction that we get from God. I'm, I'm waiting on you. He wouldn't have sent Jesus to die on the cross in the first place if he didn't really love us. Come back. Just as Jesus was leaving, we see at the end of Matthew, Matthew chapter 28, one of his last promises was the fact that he was going to be with his disciples. Hey, I'm leaving, but I'm still going to be with you. Huh? Uh, they were just about to see him fly off. I don't, I don't know that they've ever seen anybody fly before. But there he goes, the, the, you know, going back, uh, you know, going back to the Father. And hey, remember, I'm going to be with you. And eventually, of course, in a few days, the light would come on over their head, and they would they would understand. Right, now, now we get what he's saying. Now, now we get what he was teaching us, and now we know. He's here with us. Well, he promised his disciples he would be with them even to the end of the age or even to the end of the world. If you look around the room, you'll see uh, a room full of disciples. Yes, uh, he is going to be there for us even to the end of the age or into the world. Maybe it's even just to the end of our world, the end of our time. But he promises to be there for us. Uh, we see in uh, Hebrews chapter 12 and uh, verse number 3. Uh, Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint hearted. Remember what he did, what he went through. All of that, that yeah, that was, that was for us. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. Again, he is there for us all of the time. He is there for us to encourage us. To, you know, we, we talked about the, uh, the sword of, of God last week and, and the fact that, well, it's able to see inside of us it's able to to call us out and we've got the facts we've got uh, the the scriptures we have exactly what the word of god is no matter what the world tries to sell we have the truth he's given that there for us and sometimes again we have to be reminded oh yes yeah, it's, it's not all about me it's about him am i doing what he says i need to do so that he can be my friend especially at the end. We see in Revelation 1 and, and verse 17, when, when I saw him, I fell at his feet. Of course, uh, G, uh, John seeing Jesus there on the Isle of Patmos, uh, fell, on, uh, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand on me saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. He's already where we're trying to be. Again, we don't know what uh, death is like. We have little uh, bits and pieces of, of what happens. Uh, and what, um, we haven't had 
contrary to the uh, uh, books and movies that Hollywood has, has created for us. We haven't had somebody go there and they come back, okay, listen guys, here's what you can expect once you get there. But we know our friend is there. See, isn't it easier when, when you have, you're, you're going somewhere and, you know, compared to going somewhere not knowing anybody, not knowing anything, it's, it's, you, sometimes it can be confusing and you get kind of worried. And We don't have to worry about that. We've got a friend that, that's already there. He is going to be with us till the end. Well, the good thing is, is we get to read on and see that he is going to be with us beyond the end. So he's with us now, and he can be with us forever. That's the type of friend he is. And, of course, we know what happens after time ends for all. That there is judgment, uh, but, again, our, our friend is going to be there. Uh, the Father judges no one but has given all judgment to the Son. He is going to be there. Uh, we'll see in uh, Matthew chapter 25, he talks about, uh, you know, the, uh, the day of judgment, we're going to divide the sinners and, and those that are saved like uh, a, a farmer would uh, divide the sheep and the goats. This is when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all of the nations. He will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right with the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my Father, and here the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Hey guys, I've been waiting on you. For, for a little while, uh, you know, from the foundation of the world, you know, since, you know, before time began, I've been getting this ready for you. I'm so glad you're here. <coughs> Come on in. And, of course, that's the uh, uh, new Gary translation of what he would say. Uh, again, the, the uh, uh, Georgia English, I think, is what was brought out uh, this morning in class. But won't it be great to hear? Won't it be great to see our friend? Uh, and not have to wonder, hey, did Google get this one right? Because there's uh, like 4,700 different versions of what Jesus looks like. We'll get to see him exactly how he is. And to be able to hear him say, come in. Welcome home. Amen. What a great <laughs> sound that is going to be able to be, to hear with our own ears, whatever those ears look like, or however they work. Our friend there at the end. First John four and verse thirteen, uh, John talks about the difference in love and, and fear. By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us, because He has given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in Him and He in God. So we have come to know and to believe that. Uh, the love that uh, God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. We know what's going to happen on the day of judgment. There's going to be some that go to heaven, there's going to be some that go to hell. John says, hey, you can be confident. Uh, you, you can already know. And it boils down to the love that God has for us and that we have for him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We don't have to be worried about it. That's the whole reason Jesus came to this earth in the first place. To purchase us, to redeem us, to save us. All we have to do is be his friend. We look at... Uh, Again, this particular song and all of these, these, these problems, concerns, and worry, all at the beginning, and say, hey, listen, I've, I've noticed this with you. Let me give you the answer. Well, again, in the form of questions. Uh, do you know my Jesus? Have you heard he loves you? And that he will abide till the end. So here's our question. Is he your friend? And again, it's very, very simple. Jesus, you know, if, if you want to be my friend, Jesus came out and said, do what I command. And, and there are so many people around the world, especially uh, day like today, they, uh, 
well, uh, you know, they, they know Jesus or they have this, uh, you know, idea of Jesus. They have this uh, vision of Jesus in their head. It's uh, a little, little baby in a manger, and who doesn't love a little baby? Well, he didn't really say anything in those early chapters of the gospel. And unfortunately, there's a lot of the world that just want to hold on to that. It's when he spoke words, gave instructions, encouragement, that people then had a really big problem with. Uh, they really enjoyed dinner and a show. But then he started talking, and he, and he messed things up for them because well, he's telling me I have to change. And I'm not all about that. And unfortunately, as people read through, uh, they may skip over certain sections because, well, now he's telling me to change. 2,000 years, and he's still, he's, he's meddling. He's stepping on my toes. Do we want to be his friend or not? Because we know what being his friend means for us in the end. Well, he's going to be there welcoming us home. Well, that means we got to do what he commands. Of course, he says in uh, John 14 and verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Well, he mentioned it a couple of times. I wonder if that's really important. The answer is yes. It's eternal life and death. And as good a friend as he is, and the fact that he wants us to be in heaven with him for all eternity, he's a good enough friend to also say, but you choose. Here, there's only two options. But once we reach judgment, it's, it's heaven or hell. And it's up to you. I have provided the access, the, the way to be able to get into heaven. It's going to be beyond your imagination awesome. And then there's hell that's going to be beyond our imagination torment. <coughs> and you get to decide. I hope this morning he is your friend. Of course, uh, he's your friend if you do what he commands. He has commanded us to be obedient to the gospel. Uh, learning who he is and, and what he's done for us. The fact that he wants to be our savior, but we've got to make him our Lord first. We have to do what he says. And confessing our faith in him as a son of God. And then being willing to, to change and, and follow after him in his way. Which also includes going down into the watery grave of baptism. Having our sins washed away so that we can come up a new creature in Christ. Uh, but maybe you've done that and again have uh, turned your back on your friendship with Jesus. And have followed after uh, a friend we'll call the world. Or maybe a habit. Or maybe the old life. Or maybe it's really following after some friend. Jesus wants to be your friend. He died so they could be. Come back. Ask God for forgiveness. Turn your life back to his way. Be his friend once again, following after him. We're going to sing a song, uh, There's a, a Fountain Free. And, of course, uh, this uh, offer that he gives of life eternal it is free to us because he's paid the price. This song is supposed to encourage each other. It's asking another question. Will you come? The choice is up to you. I, I hope you choose to be friends with Jesus today and, and for all eternity. If we can help in some way, please let us know as we stand and sing. There's a fountain free is for you. Yeah.
we are thankful to you for allowing us to be here so that we can worship you together. We are thankful for the lesson that we have heard. We pray that each one of us will learn to know Jesus better. Help us to know you better so that our lives will better conform to the words that you have spoken in your book. <clears throat> we pray that you be with those who are traveling, be with Steve and Sherry and others that, that will be on the roads and protect them, help them to come back to us or to you folks to whatever their destination is safely. Help us each day as we strive to live according to your will that we'll set good examples before other people that will always follow your way, your word, so that we might be more justified in your sight. We pray that you forgive our sins, those of us who are those who have, have, have wandered away, we pray that you help them to see the path that leads back to you. Help all of us to live closer to you in Christ.